So there are a lot of potential causes for shoulder pain that is outside of the actual shoulder. So we wanna make sure that you take a very thorough history and there's some clues as to what might be a potential um, extra glenohumeral cause of shoulder pain. So if a patient comes in presenting of, uh, with a shooting, complaining of a burning, numbness, tingling of their shoulder and maybe radiating pain down their extremity, uh, you have to think that there might be more of a potential neurologic cause. And so you have to do a more thorough exam of the cervical spine and you may perform more uh, special tests to make sure that it's not a cervical disc or a potential compression of the brachial plexus uh, as it comes down and innervates the uh, arm. So uh, again, shooting, burning pain, radiating pain, think a little bit more more of a potential neurologic cause. Patients that come in complaining of pain of the shoulder may also have pain being referred um, from the abdominal region. So uh, issues with the gallbladder, the stomach, uh, the diaphragm can uh, irritate the organs and send a referred pain to the shoulder. This is also true uh, for cardiac issues. So. Um, Everybody knows that if someone has a uh, cardiac event, a lot of times it may radiate pain to the left shoulder and jaw. Uh, so uh, you always have to rule out a potential uh, cardiac issue if someone presents with uh, shoulder pain. Infections of the lungs uh, in the thoracic cage could potentially also refer pain um, because of irritation of the pleura. Uh, any sort of uh, apical lung tumor may also uh, irritate um, the um, viscera and cause referred pain to the shoulder. Um, and also, you also always have to rule out uh, pulmonary embolism as a potential cause for uh, shoulder pains. So in this chart, we're differentiating the different structures that could potentially cause pain in the shoulder. So there's some structures within the shoulder at the glenohumeral joint that could cause pain. And then there's extra glenohumeral joint structures that are outside of the actual joint itself that could potentially cause uh, shoulder pain. So let's take a look at the glenohumeral sources. So sometimes we could have some degeneration, uh, calcifications of the actual humerus and the glenoid fossa, which could cause pain at the shoulder, uh, any sort of injury, uh, inflammation, tear of the rotator cuff muscles and its tendons could cause pain. Um, suprahumeral joint is the uh, space above the humerus, and so uh, impingement and compression of the structures above the suprahumeral joint or any sort of inflammation uh, could cause pain there. And the capsule that surrounds the glenohumeral joint, those thickened ligaments could sometimes be torn or inflamed or injured. And so uh, these four things are possible um, glenohumeral joint issues that could cause pain. Outside of the joint itself, so extra glenohumeral joint issues are uh, structures that potentially could get inflamed and injured around the joint that could cause shoulder pain. So the bicep tendon itself runs in the anterior portion of the humerus, and so you could sometimes, from overuse or inflammation, have bicep tendon uh, pain. Uh, we talked about the clavicle and how uh, if you have irritation of the clavicle, if you have uh, any sort of uh, displacement or injury to the AC or SC joints of the clavicle, that could really limit joint motion and cause pain. Uh, the scapulothoracic joint is the motion of the scapula and the thoracic. Remember, we need five degrees of motion um, at that scapula for every 15 degrees of motion of the shoulder joint. So if that scapula is restricted, matted down, um, or has any sort of muscle spasm that prevents the scapula from moving on the thoracic area, that could cause um, shoulder pain. And then the subscapularis bursitis. So this is outside of the actual glenohumeral joint itself. Uh, this bursa is uh, underneath the scapula, and if it's inflamed and irritated, that could cause pain every time you try to move the joint. There's some red flags that you need to be aware of when you're uh, evaluating your patients. So uh, we talked about before being really weary with patients that have shoulder pain uh, that is also associated with any sort of chest pain or shortness of breath because of potential uh, heart disease or uh, issues with the lung. If there's some sort of unexplained sensory or motor deficit, uh, we're uh, thinking that there might be some sort of compression or irritation of nerves, so cervical disc, um, or any sort of um, compression of the brachial plexus or the nerves somewhere along the track. If a patient has a history of trauma uh, with acute uh, disabling pain or any sort of significant weakness, uh, you need to make sure that uh, neurovascularly everything is intact. Uh, again, trauma, seizures, electric shock, or loss of uh, normal contour uh, are just different signs and symptoms that uh, it raises your index of suspicion of something else is going on that you really need to take more action quicker. 
uh, any sort of redness around the skin, um, any unexplained fever, um, any time the patient looks systemically unstable, uh, there might be some sort of infection going on that's causing um, the pains and issues. And patients with history of cancer, uh, some sort of unexplained deformity, mass or swelling, you need to make sure that it's not some sort of uh, growth going on. We could utilize special orthopedic tests to help narrow down our differential. These special tests have been developed um, to help um, identify and elicit certain um, responses to confirm uh, our suspicion, um, but they do have limited sensitivity and specificity. So you really need to take it in the context of the patient presentation and examination, um, and also um, apply any additional imaging as needed to confirm your suspected diagnosis.